everything you think you know about velociraptors is is wrong those six foot tall scaly monsters from jurassic park uh f- complete fiction the real velociraptor was the size of a large turkey extensively feathered with direct evidence of complex wing feathers and likely full body coverage and lived in the harsh deserts of central asia 75 million years ago but here's where it gets really interesting uh, we have compelling direct evidence of these feathers in the form of quill knobs on fossilized arm bones, the same attachment points modern birds use. The question is not whether they had feathers, it's what they used them for in a world without flight. The gap between Hollywood's creation and scientific reality runs deeper than most people realize. When Steven Spielberg needed a dinosaur villain for Jurassic Park, he faced a problem. Velociraptor mongoliensis, The actual species discovered in Mongolia's Gobi Desert stood barely 1.6 feet tall at the hip and stretched only six feet from nose to tail. That's roughly the size of a large turkey, hardly intimidating enough to terrorize human actors on screen. Hollywood's solution was simple but deceptive. They borrowed the name Velociraptor, but used the body plan of Deinonychus, a much larger relative from North America. The movie creators openly acknowledged their scientific liberties, but audiences walked away with a completely false impression of these ancient predators. Real velociraptors weighed between 31 to 43 pounds, making them closer to a large turkey than the 300 pound movie monsters that stalked through kitchen scenes. The film's six foot tall raptors required a dramatic scaling up of every body part from skull length to claw size, creating an animal that never existed in nature. This size confusion was not entirely Hollywood's fault. Early paleontologists working with incomplete fossil material had emphasized the reptilian aspects of these creatures, downplaying evidence that pointed toward more bird-like characteristics. The initial reconstructions portrayed Velociraptor as a scaled lizard-like predator, because that's what scientists expected dinosaurs to look like in the 1960s and 70s. The environment where real Velociraptors lived makes the movie portrayal even more problematic. These were not jungle predators stalking through dense tropical vegetation. The Jadokta formation in Mongolia reveals a harsh semi-arid landscape dominated by sand dunes and scattered water sources. During the late Cretaceous period, this region experienced extreme temperature fluctuations with scorching days followed by freezing nights. Survival in such conditions required specialized adaptations for heat regulation, water conservation, and camouflage among sparse vegetation and rocky outcrops. The arid environment shaped every aspect of Velociraptor biology from their hunting strategies to their physical appearance. Talk about a bad place to live. These predators had to cope with sandstorms, limited water and prey that was equally adapted to desert survival. The real Velociraptor was perfectly engineered for this challenging ecosystem, but scientists would need to examine their bones more closely to understand just how different their actual appearance truly was. In 2007, paleontologists Turner Makovicki and Norell were examining Velociraptor arm bones when they noticed something unusual. Small raised bumps lined the ulna bone in a precise pattern that seemed unremarkable until they realized what they were looking at. These structures called quill knobs serve one specific purpose in the animal kingdom. They anchor large, well-developed feathers to wing bones through tough ligaments. The presence of quill knobs on a velociraptor specimen provided the first direct, undeniable evidence that velociraptors possessed complex feather structures. These were not the simple hair-like proto-feathers found on some other dinosaurs, but sophisticated, organized plumage similar to what we see on modern birds of prey. The specimen measuring five feet long and weighing about 33 pounds potentially carried up to 14 secondary feathers along each arm comparable to the feather count found on Archaeopteryx, one of the earliest known birds. The discovery revealed that velociraptors had inherited their feathered appearance from flying ancestors, then adapted these structures for entirely different purposes. In Mongolia's brutal desert environment, 
These feathers served as a multifunctional survival system. During the freezing nights that followed scorching days, the dense plumage provided essential insulation against temperature swings that could kill an unprotected animal. The same feathers that kept them warm also reflected excessive heat during the day, preventing dangerous overheating while hunting across sun-baked sand dunes. Beyond temperature regulation, the feathers offered crucial camouflage advantages in their sparse habitat. The varied browns and earth tones would have broken up their silhouette among scattered rocks, dried vegetation, and shifting shadows. This natural camouflage made them nearly invisible to potential prey until the moment of attack. The feathers also functioned as precision instruments during high-speed pursuits across treacherous terrain. When chasing agile prey through rocky outcrops and loose sand, these wing feathers provided stability and fine-tuned balance adjustments that could mean the difference between a successful hunt and a broken neck from a mistimed leap. Rather than the scaly reptilian predator of popular imagination, Velociraptor emerged as something resembling a flightless predatory bird equipped with razor sharp intelligence and desert honed hunting instincts. The feathered covering represented just one component of a sophisticated killing system that operated very differently from Hollywood's slashing monsters. But their most famous weapon would prove even more misunderstood than their appearance. The sickle shaped claw that made Velociraptors famous was never designed to slash through flesh like a knife and biomechanical studies reveal its true purpose was far more sophisticated. For decades, paleontologists assumed the enlarged second toe claw worked like a switchblade delivering devastating cuts to bring down prey. The curved talon seemed perfectly designed for slicing through skin and muscle, creating the foundation for countless movie scenes of raptors slashing their victims. When researchers like Manning and Fowler tested this theory using mechanical models, they discovered the claw was surprisingly ineffective at slashing. The curved shape and robust construction of the claw were actually optimized for a completely different function, gripping and puncturing rather than cutting. The specialized joint allowed the claw to be hyperextended and then driven downward with significant force, but not in the sweeping motion popularized by cinema. Biomechanical analysis showed that Velociraptor's short, powerful metatarsus provided the leverage needed for an incredibly strong grip, similar to modern hawks and eagles. The entire foot structure worked as an integrated system with the metatarsus acting like a biological vice that could clamp down on struggling prey with tremendous force. The raptor prey restraint model demonstrates how Velociraptor could leap onto prey, sink its claws deep into flesh and use its body weight to pin the animal down. This anchoring system worked in conjunction with the animal's stiff tail, which acted as a counterbalance during the struggle with prey. The tail prevented the predator from being thrown off by desperate thrashing movements, maintaining stability throughout the attack. The forelimbs, also equipped with sharp claws, provided additional gripping points to maintain control while the predator prepared to deliver the finishing blow. The flexible wrists allowed Velociraptor to seize and hold onto struggling prey effectively while their comparatively weak jaws delivered row saw motion bites similar to modern Komodo dragons, specifically during the final stages of the attack. Rather than slashing wildly like movie monsters, Velociraptors were precision predators that relied on restraint and control to subdue their victims. Death would eventually result from blood loss and organ failure as the predator fed on the animal while it was still alive. This hunting strategy required exceptional coordination and sensory awareness that allowed real-time adjustments during high stakes encounters. The question remained, how could these ancient predators achieve such precision in their deadly work? Advanced neurological systems provided the answer. Hidden inside Velociraptor skulls was a sensory system so advanced that it rivaled modern birds of prey, giving these predators almost supernatural hunting abilities. 
Recent CT scans of velociraptor skulls revealed enlarged flocular lobes in their brains, structures that control balance and eye movement coordination. These enlarged lobes suggested capabilities that seemed almost too good to be true for a creature that lived 75 million years ago. The flocular lobes accounted for approximately 7% of the total hindbrain volume, making them massive compared to other dinosaurs. These structures are directly linked to agility and movement control in vertebrates maintaining head and eye stability during rapid motion. The enlarged flocculi indicate that quick movements and a stable gaze were essential to Velociraptor's everyday survival in the harsh Mongolian desert. The vestibulo-ocular reflex system allowed Velociraptors to keep their eyes locked on moving targets while their bodies twisted and turned during pursuit across uneven terrain. This biological tracking system meant they could maintain visual contact with prey, even while leaping over rocks, navigating sand dunes, or adjusting their trajectory mid-attack. The vestibulocolic reflexes provided similar stability for head movement, ensuring their bite delivery remained accurate despite the chaos of a high-speed chase. King's research revealed that velociraptors could hear across a frequency range from 2, 368 to 3, 965 hertz, perfect for detecting small prey movements. The elongated cochlear duct structure resembled that of modern budgerigar storks and mute swans rather than typical reptiles. This acute hearing meant they could track rustling sounds from potential prey hiding among desert vegetation or rocky crevices even detecting the subtle movements of small mammals attempting to remain motionless. The combination of exceptional balance, precise eye tracking and sensitive hearing created a predator capable of pursuing agile prey across the most difficult terrain the Cretaceous period could offer. Their sensory abilities were so refined that they could likely detect and respond to prey movements faster than the animals could react to escape attempts. These neurological adaptations transform Velociraptor into a living guided missile capable of adjusting its attack in real time during high speed pursuits through the challenging landscape of ancient Mongolia. But the sophisticated sensory package raises an important question about how these remarkable hunters actually operated in the wild. The evidence for coordinated pack hunting in velociraptors is much weaker than popular culture suggests, though the complete picture remains more complex than early assumptions indicated. Initial trackways and fossil assemblages seemed to support the idea of group hunting behavior among dromaeosaurid dinosaurs. Scientists found multiple specimens in close proximity and interpreted these discoveries as evidence of sophisticated social coordination similar to modern wolf packs. When scientists examined the evidence specifically for Velociraptor mongoliensis, the case for organized pack hunting began to weaken considerably. The famous fighting dinosaur specimen provides the most direct evidence of Velociraptor predatory behavior showing a single individual locked in mortal combat with Protoceratops and Druzy. The Velociraptor's sickle claw appears embedded in the throat of its prey, suggesting a precision attack by a solitary hunter rather than any coordinated group strategy. Most fossil assemblages that include multiple Velociraptors show signs of opportunistic scavenging rather than organized cooperative hunting. Bite marks and bone damage patterns indicate these predators gathered around carcasses, but often competed with each other rather than sharing resources peacefully. Healed injuries on velociraptor specimens suggest frequent intraspecific combat, revealing a species more inclined toward conflict than cooperation when food sources became available. The raptor prey restraint hunting model actually works better for solitary predators as coordinated attacks would interfere with the precise gripping and positioning required. The technique demands individual focus and body positioning that would be disrupted by multiple attackers attempting to pin down the same prey animal. Modern analogies point toward animals like secretary birds or caracaras, which are primarily solitary hunters that occasionally gather around abundant food sources. These contemporary birds demonstrate the same pattern of individual hunting combined with competitive scavenging that Velociraptor fossil evidence suggests. 
Komodo dragons provide another parallel hunting alone, but converging on large carcasses where they compete aggressively for feeding positions. Rather than intelligent pack hunters, velociraptors were likely opportunistic predators that combined solitary hunting with competitive scavenging. Their turkey-sized bodies were perfectly suited for ambushing smaller prey or exploiting carcasses without requiring complex social coordination. This solitary lifestyle makes perfect sense when considering the harsh desert environment these animals called home, where resources remain scarce and competition intense. The accumulated evidence paints a picture of an animal far removed from Hollywood's interpretation, yet somehow even more fascinating than fiction. The discoveries reveal how these ancient predators fit into the broader evolutionary story connecting dinosaurs to modern birds. The true Velociraptor stands as something far more remarkable than any Hollywood creation, a feathered bird-like hunter perfectly engineered for survival in the unforgiving deserts of ancient Mongolia. These findings illuminate the dinosaur bird transition, showing how flight capable ancestors gave rise to specialized ground predators that retained sophisticated feather systems for entirely different purposes. Scientific understanding constantly evolves, revealing truths that often contradict our most cherished assumptions about prehistoric life. Each fossil analysis brings new insights that reshape our knowledge of these ancient ecosystems and the creatures that inhabited them. When you observe a hawk swooping down on its prey or read about the latest paleontological breakthroughs, remember that science continuously rewrites our understanding of Earth's remarkable history.